Huang Fu Song was a military general of the later Han dynasty. He played a significant role in putting down the Yellow Turban and Liang Province rebellions. He became widely recognised along with Liu Zhi and Zhu Jun as the three significant imperial commanders of the time. Huang Fu Song was from Anding Commandery. His father, Huang Fu Zhi, administrated over Yanmen Commandery, whilst his uncle, Huang Fu Gui, served as the Grand General on the Liao. His aunt, Lady Huang Fu, was a skilled student of literature and an accomplished cursive calligrapher. Widely admired as a good, beautiful, versatile and educated woman, she often helped draft documents in the cabinet of the Huang Fu family. She is best known for confronting Dong Zhuo after he tried to force her to marry him. Huang Fu Song was known to be a modest and generous person. As a youth, he bore big ambitions to achieve political and military feats. He enjoyed the classic of history and poetry, whilst also undergoing training in archery and horseback riding. He was eventually nominated into service, where two important officials tried to recruit him, but he rejected their offers. Emperor Ling eventually sent a special carriage to summon him as gentleman consultant, then he later became administrator of Beidi Commandery. Zhang Zhui of Zhulu Commandery declared himself the great virtuous teacher. He devoted himself to adhering to the principles found within the Lao Zhi and other guiding texts of Taoism. His chanted incantations and charmed water said to cure disease attracted disciples who knelt down and confessed their sins to him. For more than ten years with their help, he attracted hundreds of thousands of followers who practiced his teachings in all prefectures and fiefs. When the Han investigators went to Xi province to apprehend Zhang Zhui, all the divisions were ordered by him to revolt simultaneously. He took the title Lord of Heaven, Zhang Bao took the title Lord of Earth and Zhang Liang assumed Lord over men. The rebels slew people as a sacrificial offering to the heaven. Wherever they went, government buildings were burned and the civilians were looted. Many commanderies were lost as the officials fled for their lives. Within ten days, even more rebels had echoed to the revolt. The capital city was in a state of panic. The emperor quickly convened a meeting of ministers. Huang Fu Song attended and advised that the government should lift the ban on factionalism and allocate funds from the palace vaults and the West Park to support the soldiers instead. He displayed benevolence, caution and duty. He submitted memorials to the thrones and offered more than 500 beneficial suggestions. He wrote them himself and always destroyed the drafts so they were never leaked out to others. He was humble to intellectuals and he recommended many talents to the court rather than keeping them for his own purposes. The people of the time spoke highly of and supported him. Elite troops were then summoned from across the nation and the emperor selected from them a large number of commanders. Huang Fu Song was granted the staff of authority, made a general of the household, and received the support of Zhu Jun. They rallied to the five regiments of the Northern Army, a fully trained professional army stationed in Luoyang. It served as the strategic reserve of the empire. They also called in the cavalry from Hainan, Hainei, and Heidong commanderies, whilst also recruiting many brave soldiers from other regiments and cavalries. With just over 40,000 well-trained soldiers, Song and Jun led an army to quell the Yellow Turban rebels. Jun arrived to attack the rebel Bo Kai at Runan but was defeated. Song had positioned himself to defend Changsha, which soon came under attack from a huge number of troops led by Bo Kai. The outnumbered Han soldiers panicked, so Huang Fu summoned his officers and told them, Warfare has unpredictable changes, and victory does not depend on the number of soldiers. He had noticed the enemy was camped near grass, which would be easy to set alight with help from the wind. Soldiers were ordered to climb the walls with reeds in hand, and they waited for the wind to come. On the appropriate night, elite soldiers were sent to take sideways to get out of the encircled city where they set fires which started roaring. The troops on the walls also set fires as a response, then they began to beat the drums and Huang Fu Song charged out the city into the enemy formations which caused them to panic and flee. Cavalry commandant Tao Tao arrived at the battleground and joined forces with Song and Jun. The trio annihilated several tens of thousands of rebels and Bo Kai at Runan as they reclaimed the area. They went further to Dong Commandery, where they captured the rebel leader Bu Yi and slew more than several thousand rebels in the fighting. By now, Lu Zhi and Dong Zhuo had both attacked Zhang Zhui, but they returned without success. Huang Fu Song was then sent to Guangzhou to fight against Zhang Zhui, who died whilst the city was under siege. The rebels were strong and brave and would not back down, as Zhang Liang took over command of his brother's troops. Huang Fu Song closed his camp's gates and waited until his enemy had become lax. He then organised his troops at night and charged the enemy when the roosters began to crow. 
30,000 rebels were defeated, with an apparent 50,000 drowning in the Yellow River. This great victory resulted in Zhang Liang being beheaded, more than 30,000 chariots loaded with equipment being burnt, and many rebels, women and children being captured. Zhang Zhui's body was dug up and cut up, along with his coffin. His head was then severed and sent to the imperial court. Again, Huang Fu led the Han forces on towards Xie Shuyang, a city within Julu Commandery. Zhang Bao met his end here along with 100,000 rebels. The corpses were piled up in a massive grave, covered with earth at the south of the city. It was named the Capital Observatory. Upon returning from the campaign, Huang Fu Song was granted noble titles from the Emperor for his deeds, whereupon his fief had 8,000 households. With the rebellion put down, Huang Fu Song asked the court to relieve Xi province from paying tax for one year. The people sang songs to praise him. When the nation became chaotic, cities turned to ruins, mothers couldn't protect their sons, and wives lost their husbands. Thanks to Lord Huang Fu, we were able to live in peace. Ever since he helped suppress the rebellion, he inspired awe throughout the nation. Whenever his armies came to rest, he would wait until all camps were set up before he entered his own tent. He would also wait until his soldiers were feasting before he himself ate a meal. When some of his officers took bribes, he gave them even more money and gifts. Some felt ashamed, and some even committed suicide. The political situation deteriorated day by day, as the entire empire became exhausted and stranded in difficulties. A former magistrate tried to persuade Wang Fu Song to secure his power and reputation. He praised Song's miraculous military manoeuvres and his strategies that all worked well. His conquests were described as breaking dead wood or pouring hot water onto snow. Now that you've achieved great feats that cannot be rewarded with incentives, and are a man of remarkable virtues, you still serve an incompetent emperor. How can you guarantee your safety? Huang Fu had not even questioned his safety, as he loyally worked hard all day and night, but the magistrate proposed a strategy to overthrow the Han Empire anyway, to guarantee his safety. The Han Empire is corrupt as rotten wood, which is impossible for carving. This dynasty is in decline, and it's difficult for you to contribute to its governance. And now the eunuchs have formed their alliance, and the villains gather like people in a market. The emperor's edicts are never implemented. All power goes to the eunuchs that are close to the throne. It's hard for you to survive for long under such a weak boss. Since the great feats you have already achieved cannot be rewarded with more incentives, there will be slanderers and backstabbers. If you don't take any action soon, someday you may feel it is too late to regret it. Song became fearful upon hearing this, but still stood by his principles and rejected the magistrate's advice who fled after his denial. The Yellow Turban rebels were small enemies. They formed their organisations not long ago and they were easy to dissolve. They were not supposed to succeed in their cause. If I expect to achieve great feats that I do not deserve, this would only bring disasters to me soon. It's still better that I remain a loyal officer to the Imperial Court. Even if there would be much slandering, the worst result for me is exile or deposition. I still have a clean reputation, and will be remembered by the people after my death. Your unusual suggestion is something I dare not hear. Bi Anjiang and Han Sui soon started a rebellion in Liang province. By the coming spring, the emperor had assigned Huang Fu Song to Chang'an in order to defend the imperial gardens and mausoleums. In the beginning, Dong Zhuo served as a general of the Van, whereas Huang Fu Song served as a left general. Both of them were ordered to suppress Bian Zhang and Han Sui, so the two contended for a higher status. Wang Fu had earlier passed by Xiao Zhong's residence that exceeded the proper standards. When he reported this to the capital, the residence was confiscated, and the eunuchs bore a grudge against him for this. Whilst he was defending Chang'an, they slandered him back at the capital, telling the emperor that he achieved no feats in battle whilst wasting massive resources. In autumn, he was summoned back to the capital and demoted, with his fief now consisting of only 2,000 households. In 188, when Wang Guo laid siege to Chen Kang, Wang Fu Song became reinstated and sent with Dong Zhuo to relieve the city, where they each led 20,000 men. Dong Zhuo wanted to advance to Chen Kang immediately, but Song disagreed. After some debate, they decided not to attack, and eventually their enemy became weak with low morale, and started to retreat. When Wang Fu saw the opportunity to attack, Dong Zhuo now disagreed with him, but Song didn't heed his advice. Dong Zhuo was assigned as the rear guard, whilst Huang Fu led the armies in a series of victories that eventually ended Wang Guo's life as he fled. Dong Zhuo felt very ashamed and began to pour a grudge against Huang Fu. The next year, when Dong Zhuo was appointed as governor of Bing, he had to hand his troops over to Huang Fu's Song, but he refused. Song's nephew warned his uncle that the dynasty has lost the ability to control the empire, 
and any Song or Dong can bring stability to the realm, but now there is bad blood. Huang Fu Song was advised by his nephew to display righteousness by defeating Dong Zhuo, but he was hesitant. Instead, he wrote to the Emperor, complaining about the brute who harbours wicked intentions by delaying his advance and claiming that there's chaos in the capital. When the Emperor read the report to Dong Zhuo and blamed him for his disobedience, he grew even more angry towards Huang Fu Song. In 190, Dong Zhuo assumed the power of regency, and with it, control over the imperial court. He intended to kill Huang Fu Song under the pretext of a new appointment, so had him summoned to Luo Yang. Before Song departed, he was warned by Liang Yang that the Han court is still weak. Even though Dong Zhuo had slain all the eunuchs, he was still not loyal to the state. He suggested that the Yuan clan attack him from the east, whilst Huang Fu leads his 30,000 men from the west to receive the emperor, who would accept a proposed edict, then the rebels could be exterminated. Huang Fu Song rejected this idea and accepted his new position at Luo Yang instead, but the proposed edict was soon discovered and submitted to the throne. The emperor followed the advice of his government to dispatch officials in order to interrogate Song so that Dong Zhuo could have him slain. Wang Fu Song's son, Wang Fu Jianshu, was on good terms with Dong Zhuo, however, and soon learned about the trap set for his father. He dismissed himself from his post at Chang'an to hastily reach Luo Yang before his father was put to death. Dong Zhuo was at a banquet when Huang Fu Jianshu approached him and lectured him on righteous principles. His eyes were welling with tears when he kowtowed, which emotionally inspired the other guests who were seated. They stood up to further appeal for mercy on Huang Fu Song's behalf. Even Dong Zhuo stood up and took Jian Xu's hand as he invited him to be seated at his side. Huang Fu Song was eventually freed from arrest and reinstated as a court counsellor. He even went on to receive a further promotion to a palace assistant secretary. One day, Dong Zhuo returned to Chang'an and had officials at the roadside waiting to greet his return. Dong implied that all officials whose title is below Palace Assistant Secretary should kneel down, showing his childish intention to finally make Huang Fu Song submit to him. After the ceremony, Huang Fu Song knelt down under Dong Zhuo's carriage, who took his hand and said, Yi Zhen, are you obedient now? Song smiled and made an apology. In the past, we were both swans, but your excellency has become a phoenix today. After Dong Zhuo met his end through assassination, Wang Fu Song received three different appointments, until auspicious meteors appeared, which caused the superstitious officials to remove his titles. He was once more reinstated, but eventually replaced by Zhou Yu's uncle, Zhou Zhong. Wang Fu Song passed away due to illness when Li Zhui and Guo Xi began their civil war. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.